Buzz Aldrin used one unsuspected item to rescue the moon landing. When Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins signed up for the Apollo 11 lunar landing mission, they knew what they were getting into. Mechanical failures, oxygen management, and sci-fi-inspired undocumented space diseases were just a few possibilities that could prevent them from ever returning to Earth. Except in the few hours Neil and Buzz spent on the moon, a completely unexpected issue surfaced that threatened the entire mission. And though the world eventually watched the astronauts return safely home, Reports on the most famous space mission would have been awfully different were it not for Buzz Aldrin's quick thinking. On July 24, 1969, just after noon, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins were floating on a raft in the Pacific Ocean, waiting patiently for helicopters from the USS Hornet to pluck them out of the water. Once brought aboard the naval craft, the three bold astronauts were hailed as heroes. Seamen rushed to greet them on the flight deck but they were quickly hurried to the mobile quarantine facility where a special guest welcomed them home. President Nixon congratulated Buzz, Neil, and Michael, highlighting their contributions to the USA, Earth, and humanity. Yet in the midst of the celebration, Buzz and the crew couldn't help but think about how the mission nearly ended in catastrophe. Buzz Aldrin made the avoided disaster public in his 2009 book, Magnificent Desolation, The Long Journey Home from the Moon. Apparently, mankind's giant leap nearly faltered on the moon. The exploration mission went well. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin left the lunar module and spent the next few hours collecting samples and taking photographs, famously planting the U.S. flag on the moon's surface. Their work finished, the two astronauts returned to the lunar module, the spacecraft that took them from the command module to the moon's surface, and ate dinner before settling down for some sleep, which proved difficult. Because even though Michael Collins was still aboard the command module, keeping the craft in orbit until the three were ready to return to Earth, there wasn't much room in the lunar module for Neil and Buzz, two grown men trying to stretch out. They made it work, though. Neil Armstrong fashioned a sort of hammock and Buzz Aldrin curled up on the moon dust-covered floor. Funny enough, it was this sleeping arrangement that might have saved both their lives. From his low vantage point, Buzz Aldrin spotted an inch-long, metallic something peeking out from the lunar dust. Curious, he looked closer and jolted as he realized he and Neil were in serious trouble. It was a circuit breaker switch, and he didn't need years of NASA training to know it most definitely was supposed to be attached to something important. After scanning the module's instrument panel to see where it came from, he gulped hard. The broken switch, he wrote, had snapped off from the engine arm circuit breaker the one vital breaker needed to send electrical power to the ascent engine below that would lift Neil and me off the moon and back to Michael Collins on the command module. In other words, if Buzz Aldrin couldn't repair the breaker, he and Neil would be stuck on the moon. Panicking, they called NASA mission control. Engineers told them not to worry, Houston would have a solution after Buzz and Neil got some sleep. But Buzz awoke to find Houston still had no idea how to fix the breaker switch. If the first men to walk on the moon didn't want to be the first men to die on the moon, they had to fix the switch on their own. After examining the circuit breaker more closely, Buzz remembered, I thought that if I could find something in the lunar module to push it into the circuit, it might hold. But since it was an electrical circuit, he couldn't just use his finger. With the lunar module due to launch and reconnect with the command module in just a few hours, Buzz Aldrin started searching through the cargo on board the shuttle. Those in the know back on Earth waited with bated breath. No one in Houston wanted President Nixon to have to deliver the second moon landing speech he prepared. The one that read, Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. However, Buzz Aldrin realized the solution might be in his pocket. A felt-tipped pen. With only a few hours of oxygen remaining in the lunar module, he and Neil hoped the pen would work. Their lives and a nation's hope relied on it. To make sure they had enough time to look for a second solution, Neil and Buzz agreed to forego their final few hours on the moon and leave for the command module right then and there. After moving the countdown procedure up by a couple of hours in case it didn't work, Buzz wrote, I inserted the pen into the small opening where the circuit breaker switch should have been 
and pushed it in. It worked. The circuit breaker held, Buzz wrote. We were going to get off the moon after all. The spacecraft ascended, and soon Buzz and Neil reconnected with Michael Collins on the command module and were on their way to the USS Hornet. Two years after Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin so famously took a giant leap for mankind, NASA concluded two lunar landings weren't enough. Organization executives wanted a third, so they cooked up the Apollo 14 mission. The mission saw Commander Alan Shepard, Command Module Pilot Stuart Rusa, and Lunar Module Pilot Edgar Mitchell suit up for what would be a nine-day jaunt to the moon. NASA scheduled the launch for October 1970, but after the failure of the Apollo 13 mission, delayed it four months. So it was January 31, 1971, when these three finally took off from the Kennedy Space Center. The astronauts hoped, of course, that their scientific agenda up in space would change the way humanity thought about physics, about life. They didn't know, however, that they'd make a discovery destined to shake the scientific community eight years later. On February 5th, the crew landed on the moon. Shepard and Mitchell took giant leaps of their own while Rusa stayed in lunar orbit. Over the next 33 hours, the guys worked. While in the orbiting shuttle, Rusa took photos of Earth and Moon, including the spot the future Apollo 16 was scheduled to land. He also germinated 500 tree seeds, which, fun fact, eventually became known as moon trees. Meanwhile, on the moon surface, Shepard whacked a few golf balls with a club he built with some spare junk. Cool as that sounds, the real game-changing mission involved rocks. Shepard and Mitchell collected almost 100 pounds of moon rocks. Scientists were no doubt licking their lips, thinking of all the rare moon minerals and lunar geological practices these puppies would help them understand. Nine days after takeoff, on February 9th, the Apollo 14 crew landed safely in the Pacific Ocean. Back on Earth, they delivered their findings to NASA, where scientists eagerly went to work. Unbeknownst to the Apollo 14 crew, however, was that amidst those hundreds of rocks was one that would have scientists completely baffled. A rock that had no business being on the moon. It was learned decades later after NASA loaned the rock to Curtin University in Australia. There in 2018, Professor Alexander Nemchin made an eyebrow-raising observation about the rock. The 1.8 gram sample contained granite, a mineral common on Earth but incredibly rare on the moon. The sample also contained quartz, Professor Nemchin added, which is an even more unusual find on the moon. Additionally, the rock contained zircon, and the chemistry was very different from that of every other zircon grain ever analyzed in lunar samples, he concluded, and remarkably similar to the zircons found on Earth. In other words, somehow among the rocks collected by Shepard and Mitchell was a rock formed on Earth. Professor Nemchin and his team were stumped. How could a stone make the journey without hitching a ride? Professor Nemchin and his team put their heads together and composed a theory. The story behind the rock's journey as they saw it started four billion years before the Apollo 14 crew stepped aboard their aircraft. See, back then, when the Earth was in its infancy, space proved a wild place. Asteroids were constantly slamming into the baby-faced planet, forming the land masses we call home, because Bruce Willis wasn't around to destroy the asteroids. Some of those pre-Willis meteors hit with so much impact that they launched pieces of the Earth's surface a few dozen million miles all the way up to the surface of the moon. While this sounds insane, the moon during that time period was about three times closer to Earth than it is now. This explains why the rock collected by the Apollo crew was so clearly formed under terrestrial conditions. An alternate theory is that conditions of the moon billions of years ago were like the total opposite of what they are now, and that allowed the rock to form as is. Nemchin and his crew found the asteroid catapult a more reasonable theory. Either way, as team member Dr. David Kring of the University Space Research Association said, it's an extraordinary find that helps paint a better picture of early Earth and the bombardment that modified our planet. Check out these other videos from Let Me Know. If you haven't made the move to subscribe to our channel, all you need to do is click on that red subscribe button. Thank you for watching.